Alright guys, so here's the bow. We've taken it down to its back ring and the dimensions that I had laid out. Um, see the handles sort of taken in. These are just a rough, rough take in here. But you can see we've taken it down to the lines that we had created. So the next thing I did on this was I took a saw and you can see here's the handle here's the five inches here to here then the two inch fade starts there and it will end right where I cut and I cut down to about mm, half an inch here and here now why a half an inch because I know the bow isn't is not going to be bending yet at half an inch not with only 14 and a half inches of limb hang on guys big truck going by so I just cut it here at the uh, terminal end of the handle fade and I at the geez, parade and I cut it here at the start of the static fade and then just took my draw knife and leveled the whole thing out okay now the next step after that is to take I use a farrier's rasp and blend it down into here and blend this in here without giving up I did a little taper in here not too much and I did a little bit on the other side, but I'll show you what the other side, I did it on the other side for you already, I'll show you what it looks like. There's the handle fade. And then I also did the static limb fade. Now one of the benefits, of the, one of the benefits to that is when you do these, I do that now, but when everything isn't bending yet, and the reason I do it now is when you do this with the rasp, there's a tendency to cut into this area a little more than, and also of course here a little more than you want to. It's it you know you're 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 doing this sort of filing, and you tend to get a little divot there. Okay, this is the area where most of these bows break. Most of the home guards and mulgabets. This is the area where the most of the mistakes are made by people who are starting out with their bow making right here and it's because when they're making the fades this area has a little depression in it really no more than your finger and they try to do this I have to now I want this area where the fade becomes the limb to be the thickest part of the limb even though it's bending I want it to be the thickest part of the limb so everything from here on out I'm going to be taking down this way so that my taper is going to be the thinnest part of the limb working its way up like a regular flat bow as opposed to a traditional mulgabet or home guard which the limb is always the same thickness all the way through. If you're making it from a board bow you can get away with that tiller but I find when you're using a stave you have to be a little more like a modern flat bow or you know a, a traditional full length bow and, and give yourself the benefit of that curve otherwise all of the pressure is right there and because of this area here being the weak can be a weak you can inadvertently put a weak spot in there it's gonna break usually in here with most people anyway that's where I am let me give you a, a pan out of that so here's the dimensions on it now and then you see I still have to do the fades on this side so that was the next step and after we get to that, and I was, I would, you can, can you see how it, no, it's not that much, but it is right at that terminal end, it can be a little bit thicker than, say, over here, anyway, uh, thinner, I mean, not thicker, a little thinner, anyway, the point being, next, after this, is to start reducing the bow to floor tillered dimensions, getting the limbs bending a little bit, and, uh, once we start doing that, we till her, and we finish. Hopefully everything will work out. All right, Mike from Boyer Bows, guys. We'll see you soon.